Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are using pushback and popback to add and remove elements from vectors. So if you don't know what that means, that's perfect. You came to the right place. Basically, what we're saying is that we're just going to allow a user who's uh, interacting with the program to add or remove elements from a vector and as many as they want. So uh, let's get started. Let's say that we want to make a program that allows a person to enter a list of names. And we don't know how long that list of names is going to be, uh, but we're just going to let them enter names until they're done, and then, uh, and then we'll maybe print the names back out for them. So that's, uh, that's something that we wouldn't have been able to do with arrays because we'd have to know the exact number uh, of inputs that the array is able to hold, whereas the vector, it, it's just open, uh, and it can basically hold as many as the person wants to put in it. So. To get started, note that I've already written up here, include vector. Uh, none of this vector stuff will work unless you include that header file, so make sure you do that. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's define our vector. So first of all, if you remember from the last video, we just write vector, and then in between these guys, we, we pick the type that, uh, the element type. So I said we're gonna be inputting names, so let's make this uh, accept strings, okay? And then let's give it the let's name our vector and let's just call it list because you know we're going to be making a list of things. Now we don't we could if we wanted to initialize you know to uh, some amount like three or thirty names or something or elements. We're just not going to do that. We're going to leave it uh, with a size of zero to get started, and then we will allow our user to add in uh, names. And when the user adds in the first name then our vector will have a size of 1. And when they add in the second name, our vector would then have a size of 2, etc. So this will work really nicely for us if we don't, uh, if we start with a size of 0. Okay, so let's interact with our user a little bit. Let's say see out, um, please enter the names. Right, we're going to, actually, sorry, this should be a string. So please enter the names. And then we're going to, You'll see why in a second, but we're going to use a sort of sentry here. So we'll say press Q to quit because at some point this person's going to want to stop entering names. So, all right, and then we'll end line, keep things all nice. All right, uh, now what we want to do is obviously you've probably sensed it. We're going to have a, a loop coming up, so we'll have a while loop here. But before we want that, let's just uh, I mentioned the use of a sentry, so let's make our sentry. And if you remember, the sentry is just sort of a, like a little flag to kick us out of a loop if someone hits a certain key, basically. So uh, we're going to use name or a string. We're, we're just going to call it name. We could call it anything, really. And for now, we're going to initialize it to absolutely anything. I'm just going to pick an X. It, this could be literally any letter or whatever you want to put in there. We could make gibberish if you want. Uh, this is just a placeholder for now because you'll see my condition here. We're going to say, well, name is not equal to uh, Q, then do the stuff in the loop, right? And we said to get out of the loop, this person's going to have to press Q to quit. So right now, when they enter the loop, uh, name is not Q. And at some point inside, you'll see if the person ever sets it to Q, then it'll bump them out. All right, so uh, what we're going to do here, we'll allow, we've already said, please enter the names. So now in the loop, we'll allow the person to see in a name, and then how we uh, how we get this to actually add as an element to uh, to a vector. Uh, I've written down here. We use dot notation, and we use what's called push back. So this in in one step creates another element and then fills it with something. So uh, it's dot notation. So what we have to do is we actually have to use the name of the vector. So we'll say list, and then we'll have dot push back. And then in here is what we're going to be putting into that element. So we want to pick name, whatever that person has inputted into the program. All right. So then that should be good. Um, now, once we're outside of the loop, so they'll be allowed to put in as many names as they want. But when they put Q, it's going to kick them out, right? Because when, as long as this doesn't equal Q, then uh, it'll keep asking them to put in names. So. Uh, let's, for example, say, just so we can see what we've done here, we'll say, see out, maybe you have entered 
Uh, and then we can actually use another dot notation for vectors. So we'll say list.size. And this will just return us with, if you leave these uh, empty brackets here, uh, this will return us just uh, the number of entries in the, the vector, basically, the number of elements that the vector has. All right, so then add another one of those guys, names. And let's go and that line. And you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Uh, let's let's uh, let's stop there for now. Actually, no. Let's keep going. Let's actually see out the names to the user that the person has put in. Let's just do this all in a one, and then we'll talk our way through it. All right. So we're gonna need one more loop. Uh, in this case, it's probably easier to use a for loop. So we'll say for and i. You guys are probably for loop experts by now, anyways. Uh, so i less than list dot size. I think you know where this is going. And then we're going to increment i plus plus, obviously. And then here, last line, I swear, we're going to see out. Uh, and if you remember in the last video, we can access individual elements in a vector by just calling their uh, index number. So list i. And we're setting i at the beginning to be 0, so that matches up with the index. And then we'll go end line. All right. So return 0. I think we're good. Let's see. Make sure I got all the semicolons in there. All right, no, no problems yet. So let's see, actually, let's try that again. All right, so enter the names. Let's put in a name, Brayden, maybe Sam, and I don't know, John. All right, and then when we press capital Q, it should kick us out, and boom kicks us out, but there's a little problem here. So let's talk about what we're seeing actually. So as you've entered four names, when actually, well, we've only entered three, uh, and then when it prints out the four names that we entered, it's actually registering Q here as one of the names that we've put in. So that's not really desirable, and that's, uh, the reason that's happening is because uh, when we, we put in, we see in Brayden, and then we see in Sam, and then we see in John, and then we see in Q, and each time we did that, that actually gets added to our vector here uh, as a new element. And it's not until after it's been added to the vector that it recognizes that a Q has been inputted before it kicks us out of the loop. So it's actually taking in that sentry with us. Um, there's other ways that we could have written this so that wouldn't happen. Like we could switch this line with this line and for a C on the first name outside of the loop. But I kind of did this on purpose because I want to show you that uh, there's this other thing here called popback. So popback is basically the opposite of pushback, whereas popback just, when you tell a vector to pop back, it will just remove the last element. So if we go outside of our loop here, so once we've already, we're going to have to input that queue, but then the only, thing we, the only other thing that we want to do here is we'll just add in list, again with the dot notation, popback, and actually, we don't put in anything here. It doesn't. We don't need to put anything there because we're just removing. We're like deleting the last element and anything that's inside of it. So uh, this will actually remove the last element from our vector. So now, when we go and do this, it's gonna be pretty cool. So let's do this again. So we'll put in Brayden, and then maybe Jeff, and then maybe like Katie, sure, and then. When we press capital Q here to quit, now it's it's registering correctly. It's saying you have entered three names, totally correct, and those three names are Brayden, Jeff, and Katie. So the reason why it's not saying four here and spitting out that Q as one of the names that we've entered is because what we see in Brayden, and Brayden gets added to uh, our element, our vector as element, uh, the first element. And then we see in Jeff, and that gets added as our second element. And then we see in Katie, and that gets added as our third element. And then when we press, when we see in Q, Q does get added to our vector here as the fourth element. But then it, the while loop recognizes, hey, wait a second, there's a Q here, so we're going to bump you out of the loop. And the next thing it does is it sees this pop back. So it's going to grab that very last element, the fourth element, which actually with an index number of three, um, and it's going to basically just wipe it clean. It's going to delete it, just completely remove that element and take us from four elements back down to three. And then when we go here, 
when we see out the list size, it says it, now it knows that we only have three because we did have four, but then we subtracted one. So now at this point in the program, we do have three elements only. And then when we go through and ramble them off uh, by their index numbers, then we're properly getting uh, outputting just the three names that we input and not that kind of century value. So this isn't the only way to do it. Like I said, there's you, there's ways to get around this without having to use popback, but I just structured it this way so that you could see that you can use pushback to add elements and, and with sort of values attached to them. And then also uh, you can use popback to remove elements. So there you go. Uh, that's uh, I think that's a pretty good introduction to allowing users to sort of grow and shrink uh, I guess in this case just grow, but uh, you can also shrink vectors uh, using pushback and popback.